Hello, this is Ju. Hey, look what I have here. I have several computer power supplies. These are actually the power supplies that go into your computer, let's say a desktop computer, not a laptop computer, but this is what powers all your components in your computers. But I have several different kinds right here, but I wanted to focus on this one right here. This is a Corsair uh, uh, RM750X power supply. And I actually just picked this up at Goodwill. You could kind of see the markings here. I think I actually paid 13 bucks for this. It's a good deal only if it works. And unfortunately at Goodwill, I couldn't actually power it up to test at minimally to see if the fan worked. I was able to find a little uh, power cord like here that plugs in the back, which you see right here. You just plug in the standard computer plug into the back of this. And you would think that I could just plug this in at Goodwill and uh, see if it powers up just on off. But one thing about these power supplies, these computer power supplies, is that just simply plugging it into the wall and turning the on off switch here, will not necessarily turn the power supply on. And that's because it typically requires a signal from the motherboard of the computer to turn these things on and off. But there is a way around that, and I'll show you that today. So these power supplies typically come in with these bundles of wires, as you see here, and with various plugs like this. Uh, and these not only power the computer on the whole, but also a lot of the devices in the computer, like, like the hard drive or a CD-ROM drive or even an older floppy drive. Uh, this is These individual plugs plug into those devices and power those units. But for testing these power supplies, you just want to focus on the largest plug. It's this one right here. They're the 24 pin plugs. As you can see here, if you focus in just like that, they are identical. And specifically, I want you to look at all the colors of the wires coming into the plug. And I want you to find the one and only green wire, which you see right here, which is about uh, one, two, three, four from one corner here. And if you look at the other plug I have here, let's see, um, which side would it be on? Yes, uh, this one also uh, has a green wire right here, which is one, two, three, four uh, little plugs away. So that's the green wire. And it should be the only green wire on the 24 pin plug. And that green wire is what's considered the power on wire. And so if you short uh, the green wire to one of the black wires, which are the ground grounding wires, so there will be multiple black wires, but if you short them, uh, a lot of people like to use a paper clip, but <laughs> I think that's a little unsafe. You could get yourself shocked if you, especially if you uh, bridge the wrong uh, uh, plugs, but if you short the green and a black wire with the power on your unit on, then the fan should start running and you could at least say, yes, it works to the extent that the fan works. So let's try this with this particular unit. Uh, we still first need to plug it in. So let's go ahead and do that. Plug it in, make sure it's off for now. And then I typically just take uh, some wires with alligator clips like this just to test them out. Uh, you can use a paper clip unfolded, but again, I like a little bit of insulation between me and actually the power sources. So I usually use these. Um, some other people like to also use a resistor, let's say between a two and 400 ohm resistor. Uh, uh, if something's wrong with the unit, sometimes those things heat up and you can tell if, if it's not working adequately. Uh, around a 300 ohm resistor is enough to uh, turn it on, but you could also feel if, it, if it's warming up and something's gone wrong. But in general, I just use alligator clips to bridge those two wires. So we go ahead and turn the unit on. And of course, the fan is not running. So we go ahead and take the 24 pin plug find that green wire, which is right here. And I'm just going to, I'm not sure if this will stay in, but so that's one, two, three, four. 
And I'm just gonna touch that in just like that. And then there is a black wire right next to it. So the next pin right here, uh, if I use this, it should short those two wires and this fan should turn on. Hopefully you'll be able to see that. So again, it is plugged in, it's powered on. And there you go. Hopefully you can see that it is running. Oops. There you go. So at least it powers up enough so the fan works. And the same thing with the other power supply. So I just, uh, same thing. You find the green wire, which is like the fourth wire over. Go ahead and touch that. And there's a black ground wire. Again, you could use any ground wire you want. Go ahead and touch that in. And sure enough, the fan works. So this unit works. But now that brings us to this Corsair unit. Now this one, as you can see, doesn't have bundles of wires. Typically when you buy uh, at least more uh, modern uh, units from Corsair, they come with wires that you could actually plug in indiv individually. So if you don't need perhaps uh, as many plugins for let's say three devices, you only need one device, you don't have to have this bundle of wires in your, in your desktop taking up space. So you can just plug them in, in, in individually as you need them. But that brings me to a problem because these things are not color coded. And uh, the funny thing about Cursier is uh, actually this right here. Oh, let me turn around. This right here represents the 24 pin plug. And it actually says 20, uh, 24 pin ATX. And so this is 24 pins. However, if you count the number of pins, it actually adds up to 28 pins. And this is not consistent with every Corsair unit, but uh, it is common that you get 28 pins in a 24 uh, pin plug. Now the other end of the wires, after you plug in this, the other end is 24 pins. However, the, the plugs that go into this power supply is actually 28 pins. And so it's a little unclear where the power on pin is in this particular power supply unit. And it get, even gets more complicated as that. For, uh, for different Corsair units, you could have different pin combinations. So they're not all identical. Uh, some of these units actually do have 24 pins on this side. Some have 28, uh, et cetera. But some of them are, are pinned differently. So you have to be careful when testing because you don't want to power it on and short two pins that are not power on and ground. You could actually uh, totally screw up your, uh, your power supply and also create a big shock. So you don't want to do that. So you want to be sure about what you're doing with these units. And so I didn't know the pin out uh, when I purchased this. So I couldn't even, uh, even if I had a paper clip, I couldn't test it in Goodwill, but I did buy it. Uh, on a risk that it would work and I did some research and based on my research the uh, RM 750X unit is a type 4 has a type 4 pinout and this typically kind of shows you you can see the power on right here and then uh, here's the motherboard side the 24 pin here and here's the power supply side which is the 18 plus uh, 10 plugs, so 28 plugs all together. And you can see right here, if I can see it, uh, you can see that right there is the green uh, little pin out. So that should be the power on pin. And again, you have the blacks are the grounding, so you could select any of these gr uh, grounds. So let's take a look at this. Uh, let's actually flip it over so we could see a little bit better the comparison and you can see here here's the 18 pin here's the 10 pin the green pin is here and the green pin is actually again four now this is not consistent so it's just kind of it just worked out this way but four from the left so it's the fourth pin so if I bridge this pin and let's say a black pin like that hopefully this unit will power on I'll see the fan spin and I'll go, hey, maybe I got a deal at $13.
Now again, not all Cursor units are the same. There are type threes, as you can see here, and other type of pinouts. Again, you need to do your research if you're gonna try to uh, manually power these things on. Uh, please do not blow yourself up. You're warned. Um, this is just demonstration. So you're kind of taking your own risk when you do these uh, power ons by hand. Okay, so I did plug it in. It is powered on. I want to verify my pinout here. And let's see. Um, take a look at it. Get it oriented the same way. And so what we're looking at is, let's say the fourth pin over and uh, a black. Okay, so let's go ahead, see if I can do this with, so we're looking at the fourth one over and one right next to it. So we'll go ahead and stick this in the green, this is the power on. And then I'll just put the next little alligator clips in a ground. And there you go, it is powering on. Very good, so this unit at least works well enough. Now let's see if I can actually push these things in a little bit better. There you go, it's working well enough that at least the power or the fan powers on. And that is how you test these computer power supplies without actually plugging it in into your computer. Now, I wouldn't recommend if you wanted to purchase a used power supply for your computer, I don't really recommend that just because there could be a lot of other issues and you're gonna leave this thing powered on in your computer for long periods of time. And if something goes wrong, it could really screw you up. It could you know, catch fire, etc. I typically purchase these used ones for just uh, a bench power supply. I just, you know, I want the five or 12 volt uh, powers that come out of some of these plugs. And so that's what I use it for and very temporary um, usage. So I don't, again, I don't recommend uh, using used power supplies in, in your computer. Uh, I recommend just buying, buying new ones for that. But if you just want some bench power supplies, this is a good cheap way of getting them. And so there you go. That's how you test these power supplies. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, please hit that like button at the bottom of the screen. And if you consider subscribing to my channel, I have many more videos to come. Bye-bye.